friends welcome to the tutorial series on network analysis made simple this is a module wise ele electric circuit analysis paper solution series in this tutorial we are going to solve ptu cbcs scheme electrical circuit analysis questions of module 2 of june july 2017 paper of syllabus 15 e 32 friends i prefer to emphasize on basic concepts strategy and thinking process rather than detailed mathematical steps i am sure you are well equipped with the required mathematical skills hope you will enjoy the travel let's go ahead friends first let us answer the question on superposition theorem in this question we are required to state and explain the superposition theorem we know that the superposition theorem is applied to a multi source network when number of sources are present in a network it is evident that the response in any branch is the combined effect of all the sources present friends it is possible to find the resulting response by considering each individual source to be acting separately during which time other sources are to be forced to zero we know that when voltage source is forced to zero it is equivalent to short circuit and when current source is forced to zero it is equivalent to open circuit after all the source responses are found out the algebraic sum of all the responses will give the resulting response first let us state the statement the superposition theorem states that in any linear network containing multi sources the response in any branch is the algebraic sum of all the responses obtained by considering each source as acting during which time the other sources are forced to zero now let me explain consider the network shown in figure there are two sources in the network one voltage source of e volts and the other current source of i amperes let it be required to find out the load current il using superposition theorem to apply superposition theorem we need to consider one source at a time forcing the remaining sources to zero so considering only the voltage source of e volts the circuit drawn is shown in figure note the current source is forced to zero by open circuiting it using suitable circuit solving technique we have to find the current through rl let it be i1 amperes similarly considering only the current source the circuit drawn is shown in figure note the voltage is forced to zero by short circuiting it using suitable circuit solving technique we have to find current through rl let it be i2 amperes then according to superposition theorem the total current il is equal to i1 plus i2 amperes friends let us solve the question on thevenin's theorem in this question we are required to find current ix through two ohm resistance meaning two ohm is a load resistance so it has to be opened and then we have to find voc or v thevenin further observe that the circuit contains the current controlled voltage source of 2 ix volts where ix is the current through 2 ohm note that to find r thevenin we need to find isc by short circuiting the open circuited terminals then we have to obtain r thevenin using r thevenin is equal to voc upon isc so friends to find voc the circuit drawn by opening the load resistance of 2 ohm is shown in figure 
this k point you have to understand now note the terminals x1 and x2 are open hence ix is equal to 0 in turn the controlled voltage source of 2 vx volts also will become 0 thus it is equivalent to short circuit as shown let vOC or v theven in be the voltage at the terminals x1 and x2. Further, you observe that opening to ohm resulted in only one closed loop as shown. Hence, current through one ohm will be 3 amperes in the direction shown. By writing the Kirchhoff's voltage equation for the outer loop, we get plus 10 minus VOC minus 3 ampere into 1 ohm equal to 0 from which we get VOC or V theven is equal to 7 volts. Friends, to find ISC, the circuit drawn by short circuiting the terminals x1 and x2 is shown in figure. Note now IX will be present and in fact IX is equal to ISC. Also, Observe that 10 volts voltage will appear across the current source of 3 amperes. By applying Kirchhoff's current law to the junction node, we get current through 1 ohm is equal to Ix plus 3 amperes. Now, by writing Kirchhoff's voltage equation for the outer closed loop, we get plus 10 minus 1 ohm into Ix plus 3 amperes minus 2 Ix equal to 0. By solving it, we get Ix or Isc is equal to 7 divided by 3 amperes. So, R7 is equal to Voc upon Isc. By substituting the values, we get R7 is equal to 3 ohm. Now, by using V theven in and R theven in, the equivalent circuit drawn across the load resistance of 2 ohm is shown in figure. So, IL is equal to V theven in divided by R theven in plus RL. By substituting the values, we get IL is equal to 1.4 amperes. Is it not simple, friends? Friends, next. We shall solve the question on Norton's theorem. In this question, we are required to obtain Norton's equivalent circuit at the terminals A and B of the network shown in figure. To find Norton's equivalent circuit, we have to find Zn when A and B are open and In when A and B are short circuited. First, let us find Zn. Since the circuit contains only independent source, we can find Zn by short circuiting it as shown in figure. Observe the network. 10 ohm and 3 plus j 4 ohm are in parallel and minus j 10 ohm is in series with the parallel combination. Therefore, Zn is equal to 10 into 3 plus j 4 divided by 10 plus 3 plus plus J4 plus minus J10. By solving, we get Zn is equal to 8.38 angle minus 69.23. Friends, to find In, short circuiting A and B, the circuit drawn is shown in figure. Now, observe the network. The network has turned out to be a two-node network. Let V1 be the unknown node voltage as shown. By writing the nodal equation for node V1, we get V1 minus 10 angle 0 divided by 10 plus V1 divided by minus J10 plus V1 divided by 3 plus J4 is equal to 0. By solving and rearranging, we get V1 is equal to 4.385 angle 15.255. But uh, IN is equal to V1 divided by minus J10. By substituting the value of V1, we get 
ಐ ಎನ್ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಜೀರೋ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಫೋರ್ ತ್ರೀ ಏಟ್ ಆಂಗಲ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫೈವ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಟೂ ಫೈವ್ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ಐ ಎನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಜಡ್ ಎನ್ ದ ನಾಟನ್ ಸೀಕ್ವಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸರ್ಕ್ಯೂಟ್ ಡ್ರಾನ್ ಈಸ್ ಶೋನ್ ಇನ್ ಫಿಗರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ವಿ ಸಲ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ದಿ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಆನ್ ಮಿಲ್ಮನ್ಸ್ ಥೇರಮ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ರಿಕ್ವೈರ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ದಿ ಮಿಲ್ಮನ್ಸ್ ಥೇರಮ್ ಮಿಲ್ಮನ್ಸ್ ಥೇರಮ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಎ ನೆಟ್ವರ್ಕ್ ಕಂಟೇನಿಂಗ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಆಫ್ ಜನರೇಟರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ಯಾರಲಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಬಿ ಕನ್ವರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಎ ಸಿಂಗಲ್ ವೋಲ್ಟೇಜ್ ಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿ ಈಕ್ವಲಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಸಿರೀಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಈಕ್ವಲಂಟ್ ರೆಜಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಈಕ್ವಲಂಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಶೋನ್ ಇನ್ ಫಿಗರ್ ವೇರ್ ಫಿ ಈಕ್ವಲಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಸಮೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿ ಐ ಜಿ ಐ ಡಿವೈಡೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಸಮೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಜಿ ಐ ಅಂಡ್ ಆರ್ ಈಕ್ವಲಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಒನ್ ಡಿವೈಡೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಸಮೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಜಿ ಐ ನೌ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಮಿಲ್ಮನ್ ಸ್ಥೇರಮ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ದ ಮಿಲ್ಮನ್ ಸ್ಥೇರಮ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಅಜ್ಯೂಮ್ ದಟ್ ದ ತ್ರೀ ಜನರೇಟರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ಯಾರಲ್ ಆರ್ ಶೋನ್ ಆರ್ ಒನ್ ಆರ್ ಟು ಅಂಡ್ ಆರ್ ತ್ರೀ ಆರ್ ದ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನಲ್ ರೆಜಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೋರ್ಸಸ್ ವಿ ಒನ್ ವಿ ಟು ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ತ್ರೀ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ಲಿ ಆರ್ ಎಲ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಲೋಡ್ ರೆಜಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಸಮೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಐ ಜಿ ಐ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಫಿ ಒನ್ ಜಿ ಒನ್ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ವಿ ಟು ಜಿ ಟು ಪ್ಲಸ್ ವಿ ತ್ರೀ ಜಿ ತ್ರೀ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ದ ಪೊಲಾರಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಜನರೇಟರ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಸಮೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಜಿ ಐ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಜಿ ಒನ್ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಜಿ ಟು ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಜಿ ತ್ರೀ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಜಿ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಒನ್ ಅಪನ್ ಆರ್ ಒನ್ ಜಿ ಟು ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಒನ್ ಅಪನ್ ಆರ್ ಟು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಜಿ ತ್ರೀ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಒನ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ಆರ್ ತ್ರೀ ಸೊ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ಮಿಲ್ಮನ್ಸ್ ಥೇರಮ್ without using any other circuit solving technique we can find v equivalent or vm is equal to summation of v i g i divided by summation of g i and r equivalent or r m is equal to 1 divided by summation of g i hence we can find i l using the equivalent circuit obtained friends next we shall solve the problem on reciprocity theorem in this question we are required to verify the reciprocity theorem what does this mean we have to find v x which is the response across minus j2 and here the source is a current source of phi angle 90 amperes then interchanging the positions of the source and response we have to find v y which will be the response where the source was present earlier if we get to vx is equal to vy then the reciprocity theorem is verified to find vx observe the network impedance 5 plus j5 and 2 minus j2 are in parallel so we have to find ix to find vx using parallel branch theorem which states that current in one branch is equal to impedance of the other branch divided by sum of the two parallel branch impedances into the total current so by substituting the values we get ix is equal to 4.642 angle 111.8 and Vx is equal to Ix into minus J2. By substituting the values, we get Vx is equal to 9.284 angle 21.8 volts. Now, by interchanging the position of the source and the response, the circuit drawn is shown in figure. Observe the direction of current source introduced will drive the current in minus j2 in the same direction as that in the original network also observe that now minus j2 is in parallel with 2 plus 5 plus j5 which is equal to 7 plus j5 also note that the response now is the voltage across 5 plus j5 only because the source of phi angle 90 amperes was connected across phi plus j phi in the original network 
So, using parallel balance theorem, Iy is equal to minus J2 divided by 7 plus J5 minus J2 into phi angle 90. By solving it, we get Iy is equal to 1.313 angle minus 23.2. But Phy is equal to Iy into phi plus J5. By substituting the values of Iy and solving, we get Phy is equal to 9.284 angle 21.8. Since Vx is equal to Vy is equal to 9.284 angle 21.8, the reciprocity theorem is verified. Friends, finally, let us solve the problem on maximum power transfer theorem to find RL when maximum power is transferred across it. Also, we are required to find the value of maximum power transferred. Observe the network. It has only one voltage source connected across the Wheatstone bridge network. To find RL when maximum power is transferred, we have to open RL and find VOC or V7 in. To find R7 in, looking into the network through A and B, we have to short 10 volt source and find R7 in. So, to find V7 in, the circuit drawn is shown in figure. Observe the network. 10 ohm and 40 ohm are in series across 10 volt source. So, I1 is equal to 10 divided by 10 plus 40, which will give us I1 is equal to 0 0.2 amperes. Similarly, 20 ohm and 30 ohm are in series across 10 volt source. So, I2 is equal to 10 divided by 20 plus 30, which will give us I2 equal to 0 0.2 amperes. Now, by writing Kirchhoff's voltage equation for the upper loop, we get minus VOC plus 20I2 minus 10I1 is equal to 0, from which we get VOC is equal to 20I2 minus 10I1, by substituting the values of I1 and I2, we get VOC is equal to 2 volts. To find R7, the circuit drawn is shown in figure. Observe the network. Now, 10 ohm and 40 ohm are in parallel, note that, and 20 ohm and 30 ohm also are in parallel. These two parallel circuits are in series between the terminals A and B. So, RAB or R7 is equal to 10 into 40 divided by 10 plus 40 plus 20 into 30 divided by 20 plus 30. By solving it, we get R7 is equal to 20 ohm. Using V7 and R7, the equivalent circuit across the load branch drawn is shown in figure. Since the circuit is DC for maximum power transfer across the load RL, in this case RL should be equal to R7 in, hence RL is equal to 20 ohm as shown. So, IL is equal to V7 in divided by R7 in plus RL. By substituting the values, we get IL is equal to 0 0.05 amperes. Therefore, P max is equal to IL squared into RL. By substituting the values and solving, we get P max is equal to 0 0.05 watts. Friends, after going through this tutorial, I hope you have learned to explain theorems and solve numerical examples. If this tutorial has ignited some of your thoughts, Please forward your feedback and suggestions to my email. Thank you for watching this video.